What's going, man? What's up? And welcome back to another video. In this video, we got two true April Fool's horror stories animated. I know April Fool's was a couple days ago and we a little late, but it's still April, so we can still watch this. But the original link to this is going to be in the description if y'all want to watch this yourselves. And let's go ahead and get into this one. I was 16 when the folly yeah. of youth and the Jeez, lure of wow. April Fools conspired to etch a permanent shadow over my life. Our small town was steeped in superstition, a place where legends and ghost stories weren't just tales to scare children, right. but were woven into the very fabric of our existence. I stopped believing in it ghosts is, uh, right around the time I stopped believing in Santa Claus. Now, I have never seen Santa with my own eyes to say that the big man in red sitting on a sled drawn by reindeers is real, but ghosts, I can vouch with my right eye. Speaking, speaking of that, um, do y'all believe in all that kind of stuff, like the supernatural, um, folklore, um, legends, all that kind of stuff? Do y'all believe in that? Or like, do y'all believe that there is some type of truth to these things that people are talking about? Or is it just all y'all think it's all cap and just like made up stuff? Let me know. Eyeball that they walk among us forever lost. You can only pray that you do not that ever cross paths with so them or disturb true. them. Among the many tales of the departed that we had heard as kids, one less talked about was the tale she of old it. Martha, the town hermit, rumored to have dabbled in witchcraft. She Why lived she in a decrepit around? house at the edge of the woods, a place we'd been taught to avoid since we were kids. But adolescence brings a certain type of arrogance, a disbelief in the old see, ways, see, see, a see, hunger see, for see, adventure see, that see, often see. blinds better judgment. It was my idea. I thought it would be hilarious to prank her with a monster attack, to tap into the very superstitions we mocked yet were subconsciously ruled by. My friends, caught up in the spirit of April Fools, eagerly agreed. We spent a week planning, crafting the most realistic costume from bits of fur and masks we could find. Hey, I just, I just want to say this right now. I feel that any joke that you have to plan is like not a good joke. It's definitely... A joke that you have to plan is not a good joke. Joke, a good joke comes naturally. So if you're planning a joke, you got to know that that shit is not good. Like, be, be real. Find all the scare an old not, woman never who, funny. in our minds, was nothing more than a relic of a bygone era. The night man. was perfect. A sliver of moon barely lighting the sky, casting long shadows that played into our prank. We approached old Martha's house, hearts racing with excitement and a touch of fear. Fear not of the supernatural, but of being caught. I was the monster, cloaked in shadows, moving with exaggerated beast-like motions. My friends banged on our windows and doors, calling out warnings of a creature come to claim her soul. The door cracked open and there she stood. Old Martha, her eyes wide not with fear, but with the sorrow so deep it momentarily halted our jest. Before we could retreat, before we could reveal the prank, she spoke, her voice a whisper that cut through the night. By next April's fool, oh, you might be shall man. know the true face of horror. And as soon as she said those words, her knees gave in and she collapsed oh. before us, falling flat on her face, dead. Just her Martha. heart couldn't bear the cruel joke we played. Oh, they just killed Martha. Panic set in. We pulled her Super inside amazing. her own dark yes. and dingy house that stank of rotten meat and gathered dust. My friends helped me place her body on a small bed. But as we were doing that, we heard an animal's Not growl from everything. outside. No. We weren't brave enough to stop to investigate and fled back to the safety of our families, awesome. convincing ourselves it was a terrible accident, that our prank was not the cause. But as the days turned to weeks, and the weeks turned to months, the weight of old Martha's curse began to manifest. Strange occurrences began to plague each of us. Shadows lingered a moment too long. Laughter echoed with no source. Dreams turned to nightmares from which we woke up screaming. And somehow, all of us always saw a dark wolf in our nightmares. We tried to convince ourselves it was just guilt, but the truth of our situation was far more sinister. It was only when the manifestations became too personal, too terrifying to deny, that we acknowledged the reality of the curse we had scoffed at. 
As April Fool's Day approached once again, the dread within us grew. We knew with a certainty that chilled our bones that the culmination of old Martha's curse was upon us. We attempted to apologize, to make amends by visiting her grave, yeah, offering late, flowers, and pleading for forgiveness. But the grave was cold, the silence around it an ominous portent of our failed attempts at redemption. The final night before the curse was to take full effect, we gathered together, seeking solace in numbers, hoping there was strength enough among us to withstand whatever horror awaited. But nothing could have prepared us for the truth of horror old Martha promised, a truth that would unravel the very fabric of our reality. As the clock struck midnight, ushering in April Fool's Day, the air around us thickened, charged with an unseen energy that made our skin crawl. We sat in silence, our bravado replaced by a palpable fear that clung to each breath. The house, once filled with the laughter and carelessness of youth, now seemed to prison, each creak and whisper of a harbinger of the doom old Martha had foretold. Then it began. The first sign was subtle, a flicker of movement in the corner of the eye, easily dismissed as a trick of the light or a product of frayed nerves. But then, the shadows grew bolder, coalescing into forms that were almost human, whispering our names with voices that dripped with malice. We clung to each other, our previous disputes and bravado forgotten, united in our terror. It was in this chaos that the truth of the curse revealed yeah, itself, not through the specters that tormented us, but through the very fear they inspired. With each manifestation, yeah, crying, with every back. cry and plea for cross, mercy, we were forced way. to confront the reality of what we had done. We're we're sorry, sorry, I had cried, almost shrieked at the top of my voice. My friends did the same, and suddenly, everything stopped. The horror wasn't what in the shadows or the voices. It was in us, in the guilt in the memories of that night. Old Martha's curse didn't summon monsters. It made us face the monsters within ourselves. As dawn broke, the manifestation ceased, but the relief we expected didn't come. Instead, there was an emptiness, a realization that we could never undo the harm that we had caused. We had sought to scare an old woman with tales of monsters, but in the end, we were the monsters, our actions born of cruelty and thoughtlessness. In the weeks that followed, our Damn group fractured, each of us grappling with the curse in our own way. Now but the curse it. was not so She's easily appeased. The true twist, the real horror, came when we realized that old Martha's curse had never been about haunting us with supernatural terrors. It was about living with the knowledge of our actions, of knowing that we could never escape the shadows of that night. I left town, hoping to outrun the memories, but they clung to me, a constant reminder of the curse we this invoked. Do it had almost that, been seven years like now from that day. Yeah. The April Fools, which falls in a week, will be the seventh since Martha died. Last night, I got a call from my father that my friend Brad's house caught fire and he perished. When I tried to get in touch with another friend of mine, Jerry, his sister picked up the call, only to deliver the sad news that he died a few days ago when he accidentally slipped and came under a subway. I tried to reach Jordan as well, only to find out that he hung himself a month ago and passed away. Brad... Jerry and Jordan were my three friends who accompanied me that night to old Martha's house. I couldn't put my finger at it, but I knew for a fact that you're death next, was buddy. coming from me. Yeah, you're next, buddy. My fears only became a certainty when I was researching about witchcraft and learned that one witch year is equal to seven human years. Yeah, that's why I remember the first day of like April like a scene you. straight out of a movie, where the unsuspecting protagonist, me, Jamal, walks into a plot Jamal. he never saw coming. I like was Jamal. a first-year student at Ridgemore Community College, barely adjusted to the independence and the chaotic beauty of campus life. Our small college had this unique tradition for April Fool's Day, a scavenger hunt that promised fun and harmless mischief. It sounded like the perfect distraction for my mounting coursework and the homesickness that clung to me like a shadow. The hunt was simple. Find the cursed artifacts hidden around town. You know what I've been thinking about college, bro? How crazy college is, bro? Like we have to go we have to go to college 
and study, right? While trying to make our own money, while trying to chase our own dreams, while trying to stay healthy. That's a lot to do for like somebody who's just emerging into adulthood, bro. Right? That's a that's a lot, bro. Right? Why do they make us do so much? With clues want provided by the organizers, stupid, the whole thing was why. meant to be a joke, stress, a way to bond unhealthy. over shared laughter and the so thrill of the hunt. Of I teamed up with Not a couple me. of friends eager to dive into what we thought would be a memorable adventure. The first few artifacts were easy to find, hidden in plain sight with clues that were more puns than puzzles. We found a cursed book in the library that was supposed to make us speak in tongues, and a haunted mirror in the local cafe that promised to show our true selves. We laughed at each discovery, documenting our journeys with selfies and shared jokes, blissfully unaware of the shift that was about to happen. As the day progressed, the clues led us to more secluded parts of town, and the artifacts we found began to stir an unease in the pit of my stomach. A vial of witch's blood, hidden in the graveyard, made the air around us feel colder, denser. A phantom's lantern from the old bridge seemed to flicker with ghostly light, casting long shadows that whispered of forgotten tales and warnings. The laughter among my friends faded, replaced by a tense curiosity. We joked less and watched more, our steps growing cautious as we followed the clues to the next artifact. It was in the abandoned theater downtown, a place rumored to be truly haunted, where we found the cursed mask of a forgotten actor, said to trap the soul of anyone who dared to wear it. I don't know why I put it on. Maybe it was the adrenaline or the desire not to seem afraid in front of my friends. The moment the mask touched my face, a chilling silence enveloped me. I could hear my heartbeat loud and erratic as the darkness behind the mask seemed to swallow me whole no when need. i finally managed to tear it off gasping for air i realized that the world around me had changed my friends were gone the theater was eerily silent and the playful adventure of the scavenger hunt had turned into a nightmare i stumbled out of the theater alone and disoriented the mask clutched in my trembling hands the town, once familiar and welcoming, now seemed like a labyrinth designed to trap me in its web of shadows. Each nice artifact we had collected seemed to pulsate with a malevolent energy, as if awakening to a purpose we had been too naive to see. It was only when I witnessed the shadows moving on their own, coalescing into shapes that whispered my name, right, no, that I realized like that. the danger we were in. The Stop artifacts weren't just props for a college prank, they were conduits for something darker, something that had been lying in wait for unsuspecting fools like us. As I raced to find my friends, to warn them of the danger we had unleashed, I couldn't shake the feeling that the hunt was far from over. The real curse was not the artifacts themselves, but the realization that we were not the hunters, but prey in a game that had turned all too real. The night that followed was a blur of terror and confusion as we each encountered our own nightmares, brought to life by the cursed artifacts we had collected. The town turned against us, its streets and shadows alive with threats that seemed to mock our desperation. It was only when the sun rose, casting light on the havoc of the night that we found each other again, huddled together in the daylight, trying to make sense of the horror we had survived but the relief of daylight was short-lived, as we realized the nightmare wasn't over. It had only just begun. In the days that followed, our once tight-knit group frayed at the edges, paranoia and fear becoming our constant companions. We tried to convince ourselves that it was just the aftermath of a bad trip, a collective hallucination fueled by the artifacts and the eerie atmosphere of April Fool's Day. But deep down, we knew it was something far more sinister. The shadows didn't just whisper my name that night. They whispered truths, secrets that no one else could have known, feeding on our darkest fears. I began to research, digging you know into the history of the kind of stuff, bro? Like with demons and all that whatnot, bro. They feed off like your fear and your anxiety, all that. They feed off all your negative emotions, right? So let's say you were to get haunted or stumble onto something 
that you had no business, right? If you just approach that bit with no type of fear at all, right? And you face everything head on. Do you think that bit is still as intense as it is for other people? Or like, since you're more willing to face that bit, it's not as bad. Or is it like, since you're willing to face that bit, now that bit is 10 times worse. What do y'all think? In the town itself, desperate for answers. It was during one of my late night sessions in the library that I stumbled upon a name, really Professor Caldwell, a name that was linked to a series of experiments on the power of suggestion and collective hysteria. Caldwell was a psychology professor oh, man, at our college, right. a man respected and feared in equal oh, measure, known for his unconventional methods and oh, his obsession yeah. with the limits of the human psyche. The pieces started to fall into time. place each clue leading me closer to the horrifying truth. The scavenger hunt, the artifacts, the nightmares, they were all part of Caldwell's experiment, a twisted study on fear in the human condition. We were not participants in a harmless tradition. We were subjects in an experiment that had spiraled out of control. Armed with this knowledge, I confronted Caldwell, demanding answers. The confrontation was surreal. The esteemed professor sitting calmly in his office, That's surrounded nice. by books and artifacts that seemed to pulsate with an eerie energy. He didn't deny it. Instead, he explained his theory with a fervor that bordered on madness. He spoke of breaking I mean, the human spirit, of unveiling the true nature of fear, and of us, his subjects, as if we were nothing more than data like points in his grand experiment. I recorded everything, my phone hidden in my pocket, capturing his confession, his madness. With the evidence secured, I went to the authorities, but convincing them him, was harder than I thought. Caldwell was respected, his reputation seemingly untouchable, and our story, without the recording, sounded like the ramblings of a traumatized student. It took weeks. Weeks during which the shadows continued to haunt us, and the artifacts seemed to mock our desperation. But eventually, the recording was enough to prompt an investigation. Then, everything unfolded. A history of ethical violations and psychological abuse on subjects uh, who didn't know they were parts of an experiment. Little girls, college students, nuns in a church. Caldwell was arrested and his notes confiscated by the government. But the final twist came on the day of Caldwell's sentencing two years later. As they led him away, he turned to me with a look in his eyes that chilled me to the bone. You think you've won, but fear is timeless. You've merely opened the door wider. Caldwell was committed to a mental institution later. His mind lost to the very experiments he had devoted his life to, but his words, they stayed with me. In the aftermath, we tried to return to normal, but the scars of that April Fool's Day remained. We were changed, each of us carrying the weight of the nightmares. The tradition of the scavenger hunt was abolished. As for me, I learned to live with the shadows. The whispers in the night, a constant reminder of the fine line between reality and madness. Caldwell's experiments had ended, but the fear, the true curse of that April Fool's Day, lingered. A testament to the darkness. All right, that's it for this one, man. I hope that y'all enjoy it. If y'all did, leave a like, comment, subscribe, share, all of that good stuff, man. And peace, love, and positivity, and I will catch y'all in the next one. It's two options in this world. Is you gonna win or lose? Is you gonna take the risk or not? You know you gotta choose. Yeah, I can't keep one, so all my bitches come in twos.